All right, everybody, today we're going to start talking about atomic structure. We need to know about atoms because atoms make up everything around us. This computer that I'm doing this on has atoms. You have atoms. The tables have atoms. Our food has atoms. Pencils have atoms. Everything has atoms. There are two things that we need to make sure we understand do not have atoms. That's fire and light. As we learned in the last unit, light is just photon packets being tra traveling through waves, correct? Electromagnetic waves. Fire is heat, fire is light, so it's just energy, pure energy. So there's no atoms in fire or light. But what we do need to understand is what is the structure of this atom? The atom is the smallest unit of matter that retains the identity of the substance. So for example, one atom of gold is the same as another atom of gold. Okay, it's the smallest unit of matter that retains the identity of that substance. But an atom of gold is not the same as an atom of silver. Atoms are composed of two regions. There's a nucleus. That's the very center of the atom that contains most, and by most I mean majority, of the mass of the atom. The outside of the atom, where the electrons live, which we'll find out here, don't have hardly any mass. So the mass, if something, someone asks you, where's the mass of an atom? It is in the nucleus. And then the electron cloud, the region that surrounds the nucleus. Okay. An atom is made up mostly of empty space. There's so much space in this atom. This, this, this microscopic, microscopic, microscopic thing is made up mostly of empty space. But you have the nucleus and then you have the electron cloud or the two regions. Okay, there's the nucleus. And here is the electron cloud. Those are the two regions. In the nucleus, there are two particles, protons. Protons are positively charged, two Ps. Protons are positively charged subatomic particles. And then we have the neutrons. Those are neutrally charged subatomic particles. Now understand, protons positive, neutrons neutral. So P, P, N, N in the nucleus, okay? So the nucleus contains neutrons, which are neutral. The nucleus contains protons, which are positive. The third particle are the, is the electron. The electron has a negative charge. So, as we learned in a previous unit, opposite charges attract. So you have the protons in the middle and the electrons, well, they're gonna wanna come together because the protons are positive, the electrons are negative. But understand they have those neutrons acting as buffers in between to keep them apart. So how do they interact? Protons and neutrons live really tightly in this positively charged nucleus. And it's, again, the most of the mass. The negative electrons are small and have really small mass, but have a large volume of space outside the nucleus. So they're, they're just traveling all around that nucleus, but they can't get into the nucleus. Because it's only protons and neutrons in there. So how do they balance each other out? In an atom, the protons and the electrons are equal. So if you have five protons, you have five electrons. For this class, that's all we're gonna talk about are, are just neutrally charged atoms. Okay, when you get into chemistry, they'll talk about ions and isotopes and all this sort of stuff. Where what our focus is, is just a neutrally charged atoms. Protons 
and electrons are equal. If there are 20 protons, then there are 20 electrons to balance the overall charge of the atom. The atoms are neutral. The neutrons have no charge, so they don't necessarily equal the number of protons and electrons. They don't have to, and you're going to find out that a lot of times they don't. So how do we know the number of subatomic particles in an atom? The atomic number. The atomic number indicates the number of protons in an atom. And remember, that is always the case. Always. Even when you get into chemistry and they start talking about ions and isotopes, it will never talk about protons. Protons are the element's identity. The, the atomic number is always the number of protons in an atom. So, for example, hydrogen's atomic number is one. How many protons do you think hydrogen has? Correct. It has one proton because the atomic number is one. Carbon's atomic number is six. How many protons do you think carbon has? Correct. Six protons because the atomic number is equal to the number of protons. The number of proton identifies the atom. So two prong protons are helium, 29 protons are copper. Well, how do we know the other particles? The mass number. The number of protons plus the number of neutrons in the nucleus equals the mass number. Remember, the electrons have very little mass. So we don't even calculate them in the, in the mass number because it's that small of a number. But you can say protons plus neutrons equal the mass number. So hydrogen can have a mass of three. Since it has one proton, it must have two neutrons. Number of neutrons equals mass minus atomic number. The number of neutrons equals the mass number minus the atomic number. So lithium, Li, has a mass number of seven and an atomic number of three. Protons equals three, same as atomic number. Neutrons is seven minus three. So mass number minus atomic number. So that's four. Now, you're going to find that the mass numbers on the periodic table are going to be these big, long decimals might be 6.99994 remember your rounding rules from math five or higher it rounds up four or lower it rounds down so if it's 3.464 assume the mass number is three but if it's 3.626 assume the mass number is four Neon has a mass number of 20 and an atomic number of 10. Try to figure out what the, how many neutrons are in this atom. Mass number of 20, atomic number of 10. Protons equal 10, neutrons equal 20, minus that 10, and you have 10. About the electrons. The electrons for this class will always, always equal the number of protons. That won't be the case next year when you get into in chemistry, or the year after when you get into chemistry all the time, but for the most part, electrons equal protons. So, electrons equal protons equal the atomic number. Helium has a mass number of four and an atomic number of two. Protons two, neutrons two, Electrons, too. How did we get the neutrons? We took the mass number of four minus the atomic number of two, and that gave us two. Chlorine has a mass of 35 and atomic number 17. Notice the protons here 
are equal to the, to the atomic number. The electrons here are equal to the protons. But look at these neutrons. It's 18. How did we get that? Don't get tricked by things 17, 17, 17, because it's 18. Mass number 35 minus 17 equals 18. That's how we get the, the neutrons. And again, potassium has a mass number of 39 and an atomic number of 19. 39 minus 19 is 20. Protons, 19. Electrons, same as protons, 19. But, a new, but neutrons, 20. So we talk about the Bohr model of the atom. This is not the most current model of the atom. But when students are learning about the model of the atom, it's the easiest to see. And we want to make sure that you guys have a basis to understand the atom at its basic level, okay, the structure. So there's the nucleus, right? All of the protons and the neutrons are there. The electrons are in shells or orbitals. There's, and there are a lot of orbitals. So the first ring, first orbital ring, can hold up to two electrons. One, two. The second orbital or ring can hold up to eight electrons. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight electrons. The third ring can also hold up to eight electrons. One, and the fourth ring can hold up to 18 electrons. And past that, it gets goofy. So we won't worry about really, but much up to the third ring. So you don't even have to deal with this outer fourth ring. Now, when we talk about these, we need to talk about one other thing. The outermost ring that has electrons in it is called the valence, valence, V-A-L-E-N-C-E, -E, valence electron ring. So whatever the outermost shell is, and you count the amount of, of electrons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, this would have eight valence electrons, eight valence electrons. And we'll talk more about valence electrons in when we talk about families and trends. So what does carbon look like? Carbon has a mass number of 12 and an atomic number of 6. So it has 6 protons because there's the atomic number, 6 electrons because those equal each other, and 12 minus 6 gives us 6 neutrons. So there's the nucleus. Six protons, six neutrons live in the, in the nucleus. We only have two, so how many, pro, how many electrons do we have left? We have four left. One, two, three, four. That gives us six total. How many valence electrons are there in this carbon atom? Valence electrons. If you said four, you are correct, because on the outermost ring, because we've used up all the electrons, the outermost ring, one, two, three, four valence electrons. That concludes this video on the structure of the atom. You can always go back and watch it. You can always go back and look at it. It's on Canvas as an Edpuzzle. So hopefully you did well in the Ed Puzzle. If you didn't, you might want to review the Ed Puzzle again and do it again. All right. Thank you very much for watching, and make sure you get the other two done in this unit. Thank you.